In this video, we will discuss the following topics. Creating a new card design. Adding a database connection to your card. Adding text items to the card. Adding barcodes to the card. Adding a logo to the card. Adding a photo to the card. Linking the elements on the card to the database. And customizing the look and feel of your card. First, we'll need to open the software. For this demo, I'll be using Card Exchange Producer Premium Edition. Do note that each of our editions have different features available to be used. You can learn more about the edition differences on our website at cardexchangesolutions.com. Once the software is open, we can click on the Configuration tab at the top, and then select on New Card. This will open the Create a Card Wizard. Here, you can provide a name for your card. If you would like to group your cards together, you can assign your cards to a group. If you have not yet created a card, then the Create a Card Wizard will automatically open whenever you start the software. You can disable this by unchecking the box at the bottom labeled Launch This Wizard Automatically at Startup. Now, we can click on the Next button. If you would like the software to help you create a card and add your elements to the card for you, then you can continue with the wizard by selecting the option I want help to make my card by using this wizard. Then you can click on the Next button and the wizard will guide you through creating a card. For the sake of this video and showing how the designer works, we will not be using this wizard and will instead select the option I don't want help to make my card. Skip this wizard and launch the card designer window now. Then click on the finish button. We are then presented with the designer window. On the screen, we have a ribbon at the top that contains various buttons we can use to add elements to the card and configure settings. The left-hand window shows us all of the layouts that are in the card design. In the middle of the screen, we see our blank card. This is our canvas, and where we will be setting up the look and fill of our layout. To start, we will add a database connection to our card. For this video, I will be using the sample Excel database that is included when you install the software. To add the database, click on the Data tab and then click on the New button. This will open the Database Connection Wizard. Click on the Add button to add a new connection. Provide a name for the database connection. Now, we're going to select the Excel 2007 XLSX from the drop-down. Now we can select the database by using the three dot button beside the database box. Excel files do not require a login, so we'll skip the bottom section of this pane and click on Next. On the next screen, we can choose the view that we want to connect to. For this video, I will be using the employee view. We can then select the primary key of the database. This should be a field that has its own unique value for each record. In this case, we'll select the ID number field from the drop-down. We can click on Next to continue. In the Record Lookup window, we can select fields that we want to display in the Records pane on the main interface of the software. These are fields that you can search your data on. I will select the first name, last name, and ID number. Click on Next to continue. In this window, we can specify how we want the software to interact with the database. If you want to be able to add and edit records to the database, check the Allow Editing Database Records box. You can then choose to allow for adding new records or updating records in the database. Do note that Excel files do not allow for deleting database records. Thus, the Allow Deleting Database Records box is grayed out. For the primary key, you can either choose to have the keys entered manually, like if you're going to use an employee ID as the primary key, 
or if the field you choose supports generating automatic primary keys, then you can have the database add the primary key to the record automatically. The field that I have selected will automatically increment the ID, so we can leave this as primary keys are generated by the database. Click on Next to continue. In the Data Column Settings window, we can specify individual settings for each field in the database. If you have fields that you do not wish to display in the database records pane, you can click on the field that you would like to hide. Then, you can uncheck the Visible checkbox. If you want to restrict the ability to edit particular fields, then you can uncheck the Editable box for that field. You can also choose to have the fields displayed as a drop-down box if you wish to restrict the values that are placed into that field. To do this, click on the field that you want to make a drop-down box. Then, select the drop-down menu with Fixed Values option. Once this setting is checked, you can add the values you want to display in your drop-down box by typing them in the box below, separating each value with a new line. Then, click on Next to continue. In the Storage Items window, we can define additional data that we want to store back to the database at a trigger moment. For instance, if you're using a database that has a field that can accept a photo, then you can create a storage item for that here. In our higher editions, you could also be reading the chip serial number off of the card during print. You can specify which field that you want that data to be stored back in here. Click on Finish to save your changes and exit the Database Connection Wizard. It will ask you to save your data definition. You can save it directly in the data folder that it recommends. Now click Save. We are again presented with the Card Designer window. Now that we have our database connection configured, we can begin specifying the layout of the card and adding design elements to the card. Clicking on the Insert tab at the top, we can add a second page if we wish to do double-sided printing. Then, you can select the Page Layout tab at the top. Here, we can specify the orientation of the card, either Portrait or Landscape. Next, we'll select the layout page that we want to edit from the left-hand side. Then, we'll click on the Insert tab at the top. Here, you can select the different types of elements that you would like to add. I will start by adding a field for first name and last name of the card holder. Click on the text button and then draw the box on your card by clicking and holding your mouse button. Drag the box to the correct size then release your mouse button. Once the element is added to the card, the properties box will pop up. Here, we can choose what fields we want our data to be pulled from in the database. In this case, we want the text box to contain both our first and last name. We can select Concatenation from this drop-down box. Then, we choose the fields which we want to concatenate together. In this case, we're going to select first name for the first field. And for our second concatenation box, we'll choose last name. We want to have our fields separated by a space, so make sure that the Separate Fields with Spaces box is checked. You should see the placeholder data now show up on your card. You can further customize the look and feel of your design element by reopening the Properties box. Simply double-click on the element. It'll reopen the Properties window. Now, you can click on the Text tab at the top. Here, you can change the text font, change the size of the font, change any style of the font, center, left align, or right align the font, and you can choose other styles as needed. One thing to note, 
Depending on the length of the field that you have, you may want to enable shrink to fit or word wrap to prevent the data from being cut off. If you want to add a barcode, back on the Insert tab, you can choose between a linear barcode or a two-dimensional barcode. In this video, we will be adding a linear barcode to the card. Like we did before, click and drag the element to the card. If the application that you'll be using to scan the barcode requires a specific kind of barcode, you can change the type here by selecting from this drop-down box. For this case, we'll use a standard code 39 barcode. Now, we can select the field that we want the data to be pulled from in the properties box. I will map this element to the employee number field in my database. You can customize or turn off the caption to the barcode by closing this box, going to the properties window, and then clicking on the text tab. Here, you can either choose to show or hide the caption show a checksum, or show the start and stop characters of the barcode. Here, you can also change the text of the barcode. Next, we will add a logo. Click on the Insert tab at the top. Using the same method as before, click and drag the image across the card where you would like your logo to be. Next, in the Properties window, we can leave the drop-down set as Fixed Image. Here, you can click on the three dots to select the image that you would like to use. To adjust the positioning of the image, click on the Position tab in the Properties window. Here, you can change how you want the image to be displayed. In this case, I will set the alignment boxes to center. Now, let's adjust the elements on the card so we have room for a photo. We can simply click and drag the elements wherever we want them. Then clicking on the Insert tab, we can insert another image. This will be used to show the card holder's picture on the card, so we can select Photo from the drop-down box. You'll see an additional drop-down box pop up below. If you're using a database that has a field that can store images, you can select that field from the second drop-down. In this case, because we are using an Excel file as our database, we cannot store images directly into the field. So, we will store the photos into a folder. In the second drop-down box, select the field that you want your photos named by. I will use the ID field. Next, you can choose the folder that you want the images to be stored in. Finally, you can choose the output of what type of image that you would like it to save as. You can also customize the photo field by adding borders, clicking on this close box right here and then going over to the borders tab in the properties window. You can add a border by specifying the thickness. You can also choose to round the corners if you so desire. You can also specify a color of the borders. By clicking on the Colors tab in the Properties window, going to the Border Brush, we can adjust the value of the color. Finally, we can finish the design of our card by resizing the elements and aligning them. To resize the elements, click on an element on the card and drag the box to how you would like for it to display on the card. Clicking on one element and then holding shift and clicking a second element will allow you to select multiple elements at once. 
When you have multiple elements selected, you can right-click on an element and then align the items together. You can also choose to make fields equal width and equal height. Once you're finished with your card design, you can click on the blue button in the top left to save your card design. Then you can close the designer. You'll be presented with the main interface of the software. You can then choose to select your record, edit any data of that record, and print the card. Thank you for joining today's video.